Welcome to ChemDoodle Shorts. I'm Mary, your ChemDoodle Pro. Let's learn about Vesper theory and the tetrahedral geometry. Recall that Vesper stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. It's a model that predicts the geometry of molecules based on the valence shell electrons of a central atom. Electron pairs and bonds or lone pairs on a central atom minimize repulsions by maximizing their distance from each other. As seen here in carbon dioxide, the valence electrons in the double bonds on the central carbon atom arrange themselves to be as far from each other as possible, on opposite sides of the carbon. Let's delve further into Vesper theory, specifically when there are four regions of high electron density around the central atom. As seen here, methane consists of a central carbon atom, with four hydrogen atoms bonded to it. In order to minimize electrostatic repulsions, methane arranges into a tetrahedral geometry. In this shape, the valence shell electrons in the single bonds are equally distanced from each other. All bond angles are 109.5 degrees. What if one of the bonds was a lone pair? Let's consider ammonia. Nitrogen, the central atom, is bonded to three hydrogen atoms and has one lone pair for a total of four domains of high electron density. Therefore, Vesper theory predicts that ammonia will adopt a tetrahedral shape with a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Ammonia has a tetrahedral basis, so its bond angles are similar to 109.5 degrees. However, its molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal because of the unshared electron pair. The lone pair occupies more space and has stronger repulsion. This increases the angle between the lone pair and the hydrogen atom so that it is greater than 109.5 degrees. In turn, the bond angle between the hydrogen atoms is less than 109.5 degrees, around 107 degrees. What if there were two lone electron pairs? Let's take a look at water. Here you can see the central oxygen atom, bonded to two hydrogen atoms. The oxygen also has two lone pairs. There are four locations about the oxygen atom for valence electrons. One, two, three, four. So water is similar to a tetrahedral structure. However, due to the two lone pairs, Vesper theory predicts that water will arrange into a bent geometry. In this bent geometry, the two lone pairs push even more on the atoms than in the trigonal pyramidal shape. Consequently, the bond angle is about 105 degrees, which is less than 107 degrees in the trigonal pyramidal shape and 109.5 degrees in the tetrahedral geometry. While water has a bent geometry, Vesper theory also predicts a bent structure for a molecule with three regions of high electron density, of which one is a lone pair. For example, sulfur dioxide. The central sulfur atom has two oxygen atoms bonded to it and one lone pair for a total of one, two, three locations of electron density. Take note that this bent geometry is different from water's bent shape. The central oxygen in water has two attached atoms and two unshared electron pairs instead of one. Therefore, oxygen has one, two, three, four total regions of high electron density. These differences extend into the bond angles as well. Sulfur dioxide has a bond angle of less than 120 degrees, whereas water has a bond angle of less than 109.5 degrees. Be mindful that Vesper theory predicts two ways to form a bent geometry, but they are different. Vesper theory is a helpful model for predicting molecular geometry. When there are four regions of high electron density, Vesper theory predicts that molecules can adopt one of the following structures based on the valence electrons in bonds and lone pairs. Tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, bent, and linear. Thanks for watching ChemDoodle Shorts.